Hello, I'm Margot with the Huntington's Outreach Project for Education at Stanford, and I'm here today to talk with you about Huntington's disease. HD is a devastating disorder that runs in families, affecting about 1 out of 10,000 people in Western countries. People with HD have a 50-50 chance of passing it on each time they have a child. It causes brain cells to malfunction and die, which in turn causes people with HD to have problems with movement, thinking, and mood. Onset of HD is highly variable. Symptoms start around age 30 to 50 for most HD patients, but about 6% of people with Huntington's disease have juvenile HD, which affects children and teenagers. Most patients die about 10 to 20 years after symptoms begin. HD is a neurodegenerative disorder, meaning that symptoms are caused by the death of nerve cells in the brain. Specifically, a part of the brain called the basal ganglia is most heavily damaged in people with HD. The basal ganglia are responsible for controlling movements. They help us start motions that we intend to do and stop motions that we don't want to do. The basal ganglia also help us organize thoughts and regulate emotions. So nerve cell death in the basal ganglia is thought to cause the symptoms of HD. There are three types of symptoms, which start at different times for different people. The most noticeable symptoms have to do with movement. People with HD begin feeling clumsy or restless and may have occasional twitches or muscle spasms. As the disease continues, they have more and more trouble controlling their motions. It becomes difficult to walk, talk, and perform tasks, and they display chorea, the uncontrollable twisting and writhing movements that are named after the Greek word for dance. In the latest stage of the disease, motor symptoms are so serious that patients can no longer care for themselves. People with HD also have problems thinking clearly. Communication is difficult, and it gets harder to start conversations or understand what is being said. People with HD also have trouble with their attention span and memory, and can't organize their thoughts very well. Another major symptom of the disease is that it affects mood and emotions. The most common symptom is depression, but other symptoms, like apathy, changes in sexual behavior, and anxiety, often occur. Sometimes people with HD become aggressive or act in socially inappropriate ways. Some of these symptoms, particularly depression, are partly caused by upsetting life changes. However, all of these symptoms are due in part to the biological changes in the brain caused by HD. These biological changes happen because people with HD have a glitch in their DNA. DNA is an important molecule stored in our bodies that acts as an instruction manual for all proteins. DNA is made of genes, and each person has two copies of each gene, one from their mother and another from their father. DNA is made of four building blocks, A, C, T, and G. People with HD have mistaken one of their two copies of the Huntington gene. This copy of the gene has an extra long sequence of CAGs. The normal form of the Huntington gene has 20 or fewer CAG repeats and codes for a protein that is thought to be important for nerve cells to work properly. However, the mutant form of the Huntington gene has 36 or more CAG repeats, which codes for a mutant Huntington protein that has a long, sticky tail of glutamine, one of the building blocks of protein. The mutant Huntington protein is toxic and is thought to be responsible for killing nerve cells in the brain. The glutamine tail causes copies of the mutant Huntington protein to stick to each other. In this way, they form clumps that usually end up in the nucleus, which is the cell's command center. Scientists don't know exactly how the mutant Huntington protein causes problems, but there are a few leading ideas. Some researchers think that the clumps of protein are harmful because they interfere with the important processes that happen in the nucleus. It is also thought that the clumps are harmful because the mutant Huntington protein sticks to more than just itself. It also sticks to other proteins that have glutamine tails. In this way, it kidnaps important proteins and prevents them from doing their jobs. Other scientists think that the clumps are actually the cell's way of protecting itself. In their view, the cell is trying to bundle all of the toxic protein together as a way of keeping it from doing harm. This is kind of like having a dumping ground for toxic chemicals, rather than allowing them to seep into the water supply or get into the ground. 
They point out that mutant Huntington is actually most harmful when it is not in clumps, as it can spread throughout the cell and cause damage in many different ways. However, this is an active area of research. Scientists are trying to understand how the mutant Huntington protein does its damage, as they hope that this will allow them to find a cure. Research has not yet led to a cure, but scientists have made some important advances. Their efforts led to the discovery of the Huntington gene in 1993 and the development of a genetic test. Now, people who have HD in the family have the option of being tested to find out whether or not they have the disease. However, many people who are at risk choose not to be tested because at this point there is no way to delay disease onset or slow down the disease once symptoms have begun. The treatments that exist are all aimed at relieving symptoms, such as the psychiatric problems and the movement difficulties. Some doctors suggest that living a healthy lifestyle, which means eating well, sleeping well, and exercising regularly, might help people with HD deal with the symptoms better. There are also various types of therapy that might help. Speech therapy and physical therapy can help patients speak more clearly and regain control over their motions, while occupational therapy helps patients maintain skills needed for day-to-day -day life. Some patients also find strength through support groups. The important thing is not to lose hope. Science is making slow but steady progress. Tetrabenazine, a drug that reduces chorea in most patients, was approved for use in America in 2008, and several other drugs are in the pipeline. Hopefully, this hard work will one day lead to a cure. For updates on research, potential drugs, and background information on Huntington's disease, visit our website, hopes.stanford.edu.